The story describes a gleaming sword thrust into a huge stone, and only the rightful King of Britain could pull it out. The fiercest warlords and the strongest soldiers tried in vain to free the blade. But then, young Arthur stepped forward. It was easy because Arthur is the rightful and true king of the Britons. Mary Ann O'Hotter meets with a metal worker who uses the practices of the ancients. She's investigating the origins of the sword in the stone story. What I want to do is go and find out more about ancient sword making techniques, because I think that might cast some light on this element of, of Arthur's legend. I suppose the sword we're going to cast would look something like this when it's finished. That is beautiful. Is this the kind of sword for a warrior king? Definitely. I think swords belong to the aristocracy. They're a very expensive piece of technology. A charcoal furnace heats a crucible containing tin and copper to form molten bronze. The bronze is poured into a single stone mould that forms the sword. Right, what we're going to do now is draw the sword out of the stone mould. We'll draw the sword out of the stone, even. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's absolutely incredible. From that, you can see where the myth from the sword in the stone comes from. Yes. Metallurgy is a pretty magical process. You take this raw material and with skilled hands, you can transform it into a glittering weapon. That might be, and I have to give it some weight, that might be the origin of the story of the sword in the stone. 